This video is on pain control within the first two days after joint replacement surgery. I think it's worthwhile thinking about this now, um, even though you haven't even come into hospital, because um, uh, there are some uh, pieces of guidance that uh, we can give you now um, so that you're better prepared and uh, know how to um, manage your pain a, a little bit better after your surgery. So the first thing to uh, mention is that most people are pleasantly surprised um, about um, their levels of um, pain after joint replacement surgery. So we use quite a number of strategies blended in combination to achieve a really good result in terms of pain control. So the standard methods that we would use uh, for many people, but not all, um, include a, a spinal anaesthetic, which is delivered by the anaesthetist just prior to your surgery, um, together with the um, infiltration of um, quite a lot of local anaesthetic into the wound, um, and then also the preemptive use of uh, a number of different um, tablets in combination. So um, within the first um, 12 to 24 hours, most people are in fact really comfortable. Um, and even as the spinal starts to wear off, uh, they find that the other assistive uh, analgesics that we've given are enough to be able to help them with their pain control in the first 24 hours. So each person's analgesia requirements are gonna be a little different. And so we have a system where uh, we will be delivering you um, regular analgesia to a certain base level, which will take um, a lot of the edge off the pain. And for many people, that might well be enough. Um, there are some people who need um, more analgesic and some people who need less. Um, and so the baseline that we provide to people is a little on the lower side um, so that people don't experience too many side effects from the uh, analgesic preparations. Now, so if you require more analgesics, you have a number of different options that are available to you. Um, and they will be administered in addition to the regular lower dose, regular analgesics that um, the nursing staff will be supplying to you in hospital. So my advice to you is in the first couple of days, if you start to notice that, you're, that your wound is becoming a little bit more uncomfortable, then let the nursing staff know early because most of the analgesic preparations that we will provide to you will be tablet therapies. And the reason why we like tablets as opposed to injections is that they tend to have a slower action of effect, which means that we can provide you with more even sustained pain relief as opposed to an injection, which might work quite quickly, but um, sometimes has a, a little bit more um, problems in terms of side effect profile um, and may not necessarily have the duration of effect that we're trying to look for. So um, it's often um, best to let the nursing staff know early so that they can um, give you some analgesics um, before the pain starts to become too significant. Um, as time goes on, um, within the first couple of days, you'll notice that your analgesic requirements will start tapering off. So um, you'll move from using the stronger analgesics um, to using analgesics probably a little less frequently, um, or alternatively using some of the uh, more moderate or modest um, strength analgesics. Um, and indeed, um, you have a variety of options that the nursing staff will discuss with you in terms of which medications to take at which um, time period. Whilst you're in hospital, it's a worthwhile opportunity uh, to be able to take note and learn about which analgesics agree with you best and provide you with the uh, effect that you're, that you're requiring. Uh, the reason why that's uh, worthwhile is because when you leave hospital, the analgesic tablets that you get sent home on will indeed be the ones that you've been taking in hospital. So it's a worthwhile opportunity for you to learn a bit more about which analgesics uh, are used in which circumstances so that you can um, then skillfully use them um, on your own at home when required.